Hello students, today we are going to learn about the hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy. It is commonly abbreviated as HMSN. So HMSN it is universal short form for hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy. It is also known as charcot Marie tooth disease. So commonly it is abbreviated as CMT. So CMT it is universal short form for charcot Marie tooth disease. Let us start with introductory part. So it is heterogeneous group of disorders. So heterogeneous means they are diverse in character. So if you consider two patients having same diagnosis of this heterogeneous motor and sensory neuropathy. So the clinical features may be different or diverse. Now prevalence is uh, 1 out of 2500. So in the population of 2500 every one individual will be suffering from hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy so that falls under the largest category of neurological disease of genetic origin so we can say that the prevalence is more as compared to other neurological disease of genetic origin now the characteristic appearance of the lower limb for this patients will be like inverted wine bottle so you consider the wine bottle so if you consider it in regular position so it will be narrower in uh, above part okay and it will be wider in uh, below part but when you consider it inverted okay so the uh, above part will be wider and the lower part will be narrower so here in the patient what is happening so distal muscles they are affected more okay so distal muscles of the lower limb means they are supplied by tibial and peroneal nerve so this tibial group and peroneal group they are affected more so they will definitely undergo atrophy but the proximal muscles they are not affected more okay so the girth will be more on proximal region and girth will be less in distal region so it will give appearance of inverted wine bottle type now before we go for classification of this uh, hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy let us understand the difference between the autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive so on the left side of the screen you can see autosomal dominant so in this what is happening so if the affected gene comes from any of the parent means if it is coming from father or mother the disease will be manifested in child in case of autosomal recessive the disease must come from both the parents so if the affected gene it is coming from father as well as mother then and then the disease will be manifested in child okay but in case if the disease is coming from only one parent okay either father or mother then disease will not be manifested but that child will be working as carrier clear so this is the difference between autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive now we have to understand the classification so type 1 type 1 it is starting uh, before the age of 30 years and in this there will be weakness and vesting of intrinsic muscles of foot as well as peroneal and tibial groups it also extends to upper limb including uh, distal uh, like introsci and lumbricals muscles of upper limb clear deformities will also be present here so that will be like pescavus or hammer toes the peripheral nose they will be thickened so they will be palpable okay and patient may also suffer from ataxia and tremor ataxia means it is lack of coordination tremor means it is rhythmic contraction of agonist as well as antagonist alternatively clear so here the pathology will be demyelination with thickened nerve okay and there will be uh, development of onion bulb like uh, structure inside the nerves so if we go for electrodiagnosis so neurophysiologically motor nerve conduction velocity will be reduced especially in common peroneal nerve and genetically it is autosomal dominant type of disorder now type 2 so it is starting after the age of 30 years weakness and vesting pattern will be same as it is in type 1 so it is including intrinsic muscle of the foot peroneal and tibial groups of leg as well as it is also including distal upper limb muscles here uh, in type 2 the foot deformities they are absent but they were present in type 1 here in type 2 the peripheral nerves they are not palpable but these nerves were palpable in type 1 clear so this is the difference between type 1 and type 2 
pathology wise uh, we have axonal loss in case of type 2 but in case of type 1 it was demyelination so this is what is the difference in pathology neurophysiologically if we go for uh, this electrodiagnostic procedure so the motor nerve conduction velocity will be normal or it may be reduced also and genetically this is autosomal dominant type of disorder now third type that is dejerin sotas disease it is known as okay in that it will start at the age of childhood only there will be uh, resting and weakness in the proximal muscles also in this specific type clear so that is affecting proximal part of the limb clear peripheral roots and spinal nerves they are thickened as it is happening in type 1 clear and csf protein will be elevated pathology is also uh, like almost similar with type 1 okay so that is demyelination with onion bulb type of formation into the nerves here mncv will be profoundly reduced if you go for electrodiagnostic procedure but this is autosomal recessive type of disorder genetically now many uh, complex form of this hereditary neuropathies they are also available those are not fitted into any of this classification clear so uh, some neuropathies they are having some additional features like optic atrophy retinopathy deafness ataxia spasticity and cardiomyopathy okay so that is also affecting cardiac system that we can see okay so because of this additional features it will be difficult to fit into any of this classification so such extra features will complicate this simple classification clear they are not fitting into any particular type many times that's why it is known as diverse in character it is heterogeneous group of disorder treatment will be always symptomatic with provision of appropriate footwear splint or some orthopedic procedures like surgery to maintain patient's mobility as much as it is possible now if the disease uh, starts in the adult life then the rate of progression will be slow so that will be better part on this patient okay if they have uh, onset at the adulthood now some genetic markers and now conduction studies will be helpful to reach to perfect or any correct diagnosis for those individuals those are at risk here now biopsy will not be having any role for diagnosis now some other rare forms of hereditary neuropathy we would like to know so one is hereditary sensory and autonomic neuropathy so the name itself it is telling it is affecting sensation as well as it is affecting autonomic nervous system so genetically it is autosomal recessive the disease will start in childhood and clinically it is characterized by insensitivity to pain why because the sensory component is affected and there will be also disorder of sweating because the autonomic nervous system is also affected now hereditary neuropathy with liability to pressure palsies so the short form is hnpp so genetically this is autosomal dominant the features will start at the age of adulthood clinically it is characterized by recurrent entrapment of neuropathy for example entrapment of median nerve that is known as carpal tunnel syndrome now hereditary neuropathy with spinocerebellar degeneration so the word itself it is telling the age of onset degeneration degeneration means with advanced age with more age clear so definitely it will be seen in elder individuals okay now the features will be of frederick's ataxia only okay so frederick's ataxia definitely it is including musculoskeletal system as well as cardiac system also now hereditary neuropathy with metabolic defects so here there will be some disorder of metabolism okay let us go for detail so one is familial definitely it is having positive family history familial amyloid neuropathy so with family history the patient will be having amyloid neuropathy means it is accumulation of insoluble protein inside the nervous system so definitely the accumulation of this unsoluble uh, protein will disturb the function of nervous system there will be porphyria why because of abnormality of hepatic hemobiosynthesis 
so in porphyria there will be accumulation of porphyrin okay and that will lead to damage to uh, function of skin as well as nervous system so porphyria it is affecting skin as well as nervous system there will be refsum's disease so in this what is happening actually so because of abnormality of phenetic acid metabolism oxidation of this phenetic acid is not going properly so there will be accumulation of this phenetic acid inside the nervous system and that will lead to hereditary neuropathy with metabolic defect okay so all these are examples where uh, some uh, problem occurs in metabolism it may be related to protein it may be related to porphyrin it may be related to phenetic acid that is nothing but one type of the branch fatty acid clear so any abnormality in metabolism will lead to damage to nervous system clear so this lecture is prepared from this book neurology and neurosurgery illustrated by linse and other authors if you have any question you can ask thank you